Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So this is a response video for one of my most popular videos on my channel and one of the most requested or sort of commented videos as well. So that is homebrew on LG TVs. So I did previously a few years back give you the instructions in terms of how to install homebrew on your LG OLED TVs as well as other model LG TVs and that would allow you to install additional apps like YouTube, AdFree and a few others, Kodi as well as some other apps as well. Now over the years LG has managed to change this home screen so originally my home screen didn't, used to look like this, it used to be just a bar along the bottom as you can see it's now I've updated my TV and this is the new LG WebOS. Unfortunately that means that the hack no longer works on my particular TV. So homebrew doesn't work on my particular TV anymore for a few reasons. I'll get into that a little later on, but I have found an alternative method and I have tested this method at my nephew's house today. And this method works perfectly on LG TVs as long as it meets the requirements that are listed on the website. So I'll insert a little clip in terms of what the spec has to be, and I'll add the link to the website in the description below as well. But first, what I want to do is just give you instructions in terms of how to run this new method. So it's not quite as easy as the previous method where you just went to a website and you dragged the bar, but it is still quite simple and it means that you don't have to mess about with developer options. You don't need a PC on this part of the hack anyway, or the installation. You only need a PC to actually download the app itself. So the, the file you will download to a USB stick. When you install it on the USB stick, make sure it's in the root directory. So that means directly on the USB stick, not inside any additional folders. And then what you want to do is I've already plugged it into the USB port on my LG C9 OLED. But what you want to do is come down to whatever your, either your music player or your photo and video player. So in my case, it shows up under the music player. So just here in the bottom right, I will go to music. And then what you want to do is go to your USB stick. So there you can see it's plugged in. You click on that. And just before I do that, what I want to do is just prove that homebrew isn't installed. So if we look across here, you'll see there's no homebrew icon. You'll, sh you'll be able to recognize it later on once I've actually installed it. So these are all the apps that are installed and there is no homebrew icon installed here. So what we'll do is go to music, go to the USB stick. This is what you'll see. And this is the folder that you're gonna end up downloading. So we'll start LOL and then a load of codes. You click into that. You then click into the temp file and you'll see two files here. And one of these, I believe it's this one, will actually be named MP3, but it doesn't matter which one you click on. I, ju I just click on the left one and it'll automatically skip to the next one. So what it does, is it says it can't recognize the file. That's normal. And then it will say it's installing. So root, rooting complete, deja vu, auto reboot. And then basically now it wants you to reboot in order to confirm that installation. So we do reboot now. On some TVs, this will happen automatically. On the C9, you have to click to re reboot the TV. So there my TV is just turned off. You can see by the little flashing LED just there, it's come back on. And if we go to the home screen again now, if I scroll right to the end, what you'll notice is the homebrew app has now appeared. So if we click into that, as you can see, this is fully working. Now on my TV, I don't think this will actually install anything. So for example, if we just click that and then we hit install, on my TV, I believe it'll give me an error. Be yeah, that. So the reason it's doing that is because I've previously had the old method of installing Homebrew. So if you've ever had the old version of Homebrew, then this, this version, even though it will install, it's not given the access that you need in order to install new apps. So obviously if you've had any of those previous apps, don't delete them. Um, but yeah, you can install this. This is just a demonstration to show you how to install it. If you do this on a fresh TV, it will work. I have verified this and I've tested this on a second TV just to make sure. Now, alongside having done this, there's a couple of other things that you wanna actually do. So if you come into this little cog icon here, click into that and Firstly, you've got an extra repo here, so you can enable that. And secondly, just make sure block system updates is enabled. By default, I believe that as well as the SSH server will be disabled, so just enable that. If you want to turn on safe, fail safe mode, you can, but it's not necessary. And then once you've turned that on, just hit uh, system reboot again. That will then reboot the system again. And if any additional apps show up in that repo, then they will populate. 
So there we go, the TV's rebooted, hit the home button on the remote, and eventually the new horrible webOS system that they've introduced loads up. So what I can do is if I scroll across and if you hold on it and then you drag it across, you can bring that to the front. So as you can see, I do have the ad-free YouTube. It kind of works, but it doesn't work fully because obviously I am on a new version of software. So if we come into my full settings and we come down to general and about this TV. So on this TV, as you can see, it's, it's on version number 05, 40, 35, and that version doesn't work with, well, it, it does work with the installation as, you, as you've seen, but the reason it's not working is because I've previously had Homebrew installed by the, the old method. So I believe that's why it's not working. Now on the old method, I never actually got Kodi working either. Whereas I have verified even Kodi will install and it does work. So every single one of these apps that you see here, they will all work as long as you've done this with the very first time and, have you, and you've used this USB installation method. So you just put it on USB stick, you plug it into the TV, you go to the MP or your music player, you click on that file and it'll install this and then all of these apps that you see will work. So I have loads of people commenting on that other video asking me about which apps you can get, whether you can get different types of video players or third party apps. What you see is what you get. So all of these apps here is what you get for now. If you can find additional repos, you just come into here, click on add repository and then you add it there. And if you, if you know of any that work, then you can add them there. I believe I did used to have a additional one before I deleted the, the app. I don't remember the actual URL for that and I don't remember if that actually gave me any additional apps or not anyway. So yeah, these are the apps that you get. The most useful ones are obviously YouTube ad free. You do get chocolate doom demo um, and then you've got a few other apps thrown in here. Obviously Kodi, as I've mentioned, does work. If you have a NAS drive, then Jellyfin also works and then you have app for Streamlink as well. They're probably the most popular ones. And then you have a few other options where you can come use this app to actually remap some of your buttons and change some of the, the default commands of each button on the actual main remote that you've got. So yeah, just wanted to make a updated video because a lot of people have been commenting that the old method doesn't work anymore. This is a verified method. Now, before I made a updated video, there was another method where you could connect into the TV and install this via a PC, but that method required a lot of additional work. So you had to go back into it every 30 days or so and redo the whole method in order to keep it working. Whereas this method, once you've installed it, just make sure you disable system updates. So block system updates and it will work and you won't have anything to worry about. So as always, if you have found this video useful, I would appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and turn on notifications for any future videos. I will occasionally make update videos as and when I find any new cool tweaks or tips and tricks. I do always make videos to try and give you guys the easiest method. So I don't want anything where you guys have to connect a laptop and go through various different SSH connections in order to do something that should be quite simple. I will wait until I find you a good method that works simply and then I will bring it to you. So do subscribe for that. I've got loads of other content on the channel as well. So hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment if you found this video helpful as well because that also helps the video out. And until the next one, thanks very much for watching.